lot of flow, but there's there's a potential for a lot more flow from that county drain. You just see that it's backed up somewhere, and it would be their responsibility. We'll help them as much as we can. Um, we're gonna I'll, I'm gonna pull some maps out to see how exactly how it was designed of the subdivision. And this was just we walked behind some houses and drove through it. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're at the council meeting tomorrow night. To be honest with you, that's why we're kind of letting you know because the roads the, the roads the catch basins drain into the retention pond. And the retention pond's full now. The roads are flooding. There's two areas wow. in there yeah. where the low spot is. There's got to be at least a foot of water in the road. And it's, and it's going up onto the sidewalk. Has their association chimed in on who we're using or why, or is this something that we bid out and we're picking? Or are they going to give us feedback, good or bad, on who's doing this work for them? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could answer that, uh, we uh, when we bid this out, we tried to stay as close to the originally approved plans that we could within the $20,000 budget, if that makes sense. So when this went to planning commission, there was a certain scope that was approved. Now I will tell you that we didn't have enough money to meet that objective entirely, but we kept it as close to the originally approved plans as we could. Yeah, we, we used the approved plans for the bidding process and kept it as close as we could to the price money that we had. Wouldn't it be normal for a subdivision, because I believe the other one that's being built this way has a retention underground that has a pump system on it, I, you know what, that I have experience with those, and people not just here, but other communities. But I'm not done with my investigation yet to look at the plans to see how it is designed for the overflow. We know there isn't a pipe for an overflow, but there's a design swale. It's a, clearly a design swale behind that one row of houses where the water. They got a river going through the water, but it's backed up. And as a matter of fact, when you walk behind the houses. It, it stops. There's a privacy fence and a berm where it stops the water. I'm not sure if it's that, that someone did that purposely or someone off a of bus road obstructed it or it, it just during development it, it, it didn't get done correctly. I don't know until I look at how it was designed and I need to get the original plans to do that. Um, by going out there and investigating, actually looking, you can see that what's going on when the pond reaches a certain level and it goes through the swale, but it's just not dumped. And, and, and literally, the, the county drain, there's a swale and the county drain's right behind it. So, it, it right, and it goes right uh, down the Breast Road, underneath Breast Road, into a drainage district. And, it's, and they are county drains. Um, you said this, um, this amount, there's still at least money in the bond? We did not use the entire amount. Okay. It had to be really it is close. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so number of just a couple thousand because, dollars. I mean, they keep it. coming to us, but this is this I've is been a, talking association. To this is a private, you know, and, and we're using bond money that we could easily keep. To, well, there are some public. things. If it becomes a public safety issue, there are things we would do to shoot the drain or right. things no, like I, that. I understand I mean, that. We're not going to need these right. these projects yeah. like well, this. You know, I don't think we could keep that bond anyways. If they fulfilled their promise. They would get the bond back. Yeah, you're sure. That's right. You know, yeah. So we want to keep it anyway. Right. But we're going to use that. We, there's actually this bond doesn't cover a lot. The, 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 the contract called for sidewalks down Breast Road, but after uh, reviewing that and looking at it, it's kind of not real practical. If you've ever been down there, there's no room and there's a ditch <laughs> between the development and the road, so you would have to enclose it, you would have to put some drainage in, then you would have to put the sidewalk in. And, and some of those things that developer just plain refused to do and he just he, he told us that basically the, the developer in writing said keep the bond we're not coming back do what you got to do so <laughs> it's in writing and we had every we had the attorney look at it and this is what the conclusion is how did the amount of the bond get established as a percentage of something you know what i can't tell you that the, the planning commission at the time when it was approved established the bond amount well let me let me just yeah, i'm not sure it's, it's well it's not even there's a long history with this. This was originally Centex Homes. They abandoned it. If Infinity came in, I think the bond was negotiated in an effort to try to get them to fill the infill lot. So I suspect it was a reduced amount. So it care for them sure. Yeah, I think so. This all happened, I don't know, 2009, 10, 11, somewhere in there is when they took over. And then, you know, we're just seeing that continuation through now. And, and I think they've I, we even questioned, um, there was some administrative approval at some point where uh, they may have built a home on a common lot that we're still, still trying to Two of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there, there's a lot of things with this development that it looked like that, that we were just trying
trying to get it to the finish line. And, and uh, so I think for the most part, everything's somewhat acceptable other than the landscaping. And it was bad in the fall when we were out there. And, uh, and then, of course, this drainage issue will, will be another issue that you know we'll try to help them to, to some degree. And then there's the park issue, but that's something that the association yeah. cannot deal with. Yeah, bad looking south. No. Yeah. I go through there quite a bit. Yeah. 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 All right, any other questions? All right, thank you. Uh, item 19, they motion to approve the resolution change to the name of certain streets located in Heritage Park to amend to the City of Taylor's Act 51 local street system. Okay, I could probably t kill two of these with one stone. Yeah, uh, this is the Heritage Park that we took uh, to the council last meeting. And um, after we were getting ready to submit the paperwork, uh, it was noticed that the entranceway, uh, let me show you how it is, off of Russ Road, which would be Andy Garrett Drive, this little portion right here, this horn portion, mm -hmm. yeah. was already in the major and local street map. This was already submitted and it was part of Brest Road. So what we're doing is we, we there's two motions in here. One is to change the name from Brest Road to Andy Garrett Drive. And the other one is that we had to remove the property description for that portion of the road so we can submit it to the state. So it's basically making a correction from a mistake that was made. For the so no one called that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so that, yeah, yeah but on this major local street map, that, that is Russell Road. Yeah. yeah, so we're just trying to make it correct. Okay. All right. Um, item 20. The motion to approve AKT peer list uh, to perform additional site investigation for City Hall. Uh, cost of additional investigation is $49,390. That's include the 10% contingency. Funds will be provided from the motor vehicle pool, uh, Mr. Bach. Yes. Um, just keep in mind that this is these are reimbursable funds up to a million dollars per site, and um, this is for more samp more sampling and put in a couple more monitoring wells to um, actually get more of a defined area of what we need to clean up. And basically, it's going to be a confirmation. I just got another proposal that just came in the day before yesterday from AKT or Peerless for a, an amount not to exceed 600 yards for cleanup. And that one's going to be coming to you after this. And I think that was an, an additional, I think it was 70,000. And But that is for actual removal of soil and to close the site and to prepare a closing report. This is to do s some more sampling to confine the area to see exactly what needs to be cleaned up. Any questions for Mr. Bach on this side? Item 21 is a motion to approve RFC Inc. Um, U.S. Lawns as a primary contractor for general property maintenance. Also approve RNA facility management and premium lawns as backup if primary contractors fail to perform. Uh, Mr. Bach. Yes, um, this is the grass cutting bid for the most part for all the departments for the EDA and, uh, and for the cemetery. Um, they were not the low bid. The low bid, I checked the references, and they did not come back with very good references. Uh, I called the city of Ypsilanti, and I think it was the other reference in there. They said they're terrible on paperwork. They used to be their primary contractor, now they're their secondary contractor, because they couldn't keep up with the work. And we just went through that with the contractor. I don't even know if this is a contract is expired or not, but he was terrible. He couldn't keep up with our lots last year. We had a big problem with our uh, grass cutting contract. And we do have experience with U.S. Lawn. Just to let you know, U.S. Lawn is the same contractor that does Telegraph Road. They really do a nice job. They got great equipment. Any questions, uh, Mr. Bizar? What's the pricing breakdown that the city one to what? What am I looking at? Is those are sections of the city. Like, I I was trying to figure out who's high and who's low, and depending on what section you're looking at, yeah, some are yeah. higher than others. So I was going to ask who was high and low, but I can't do that myself. Um, you know what, I can provide that information to you uh, for the meeting tomorrow, or I can email it to you. Okay, yeah. yeah. I just see some huge differences it's in, the, in some it's of the pricing based on the bid various specs and categories. Yeah. The, the one almost looks like a typo, though, uh, on the RNA facilities on City 4. If you look at all the other City 4s, they're in line with 1, 2, and 3, but yet this one was 3 and a third. That's yeah, what yeah. I yeah, you know, some of them are really yeah. off base. Even look at the, the if you look the at the DA Cemetery. 1 7, too, is... 
between the three companies. What, what, I mean, he's charging eleven hundred fifty dollars for a cemetery cut, and then you know U.S. Lawns is, is charging three hundred forty-five. I mean, there are kind of. I did review these in there. Some of them are higher, some of them are lower. And you said premium lawn got not the greatest. Uh, no, they did not. Okay. 